Good morning. Good morning. Did you did you kill a fly? Good morning, everyone. We have a fun plant filled day and I thought I would take you along with me. So the first thing that we're doing this morning is we are going to the spring flower show at the Lincoln Park Conservatory. So the conservatory is right next to Lincoln Park Zoo, which is free. So if you're ever in Chicago, I definitely recommend checking out the zoo. I think the conservatory is free too. You just have to get a time ticket. And then it's under renovation right now, but just kind of around the bend is the Alfred Caldwell Lily Pond, which is a beautiful, like very quiet, serene place in the middle of the city. So if you ever come to Chicago, I definitely recommend checking out those three things because they're all right next to each other. But the Spring Flower Show, I think it started in February and it runs through May 12th. So we are just getting in at the end of the flower show. The theme is Sweet Gnome Chicago, which I love a pun. So I'm excited for that. We did go last year, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was last year, not the year before. And I think we went earlier. So maybe around March. So it was nice to escape the winter cold and go in and see the beautiful flowers. Now we are getting closer <laughs> to the warm season here for us, but I still think it'll be nice to see just the conservatory filled with flowers. And the conservatory is open all year round. They just have the additional flowers in there for the spring flower show. So that's number one. Number two is going back to Gethsemane Garden Center, which is in Andersonville. It's my personal, probably favorite garden center, not because it's better than other garden centers, but just because this is where I got my first houseplants ever back in 2018 that kind of kicked off everything else. So it's definitely the one we go to the most often. It's probably one of the largest in Chicago as well. So we're going there. I need the rest of the herbs from my herb garden because I think soon I'll be able to kick all of the herbs outside. What else? Oh, I need to get two plants for two pots on my table up here and I will need to measure them. So I make sure I get plants that fit. So I'll do that before we leave. And then after that, we are going to Andersonville Galleria just down the road because I was there a couple weeks ago and I saw a little booth. So basically the Galleria is a bunch of local artists renting out booths, putting their product there, and then people buy it all in like one stop shop kind of thing. And it's big, it's like three stories, but I saw somebody who made stained glass, but plants. <laughs> so I will, and I've been thinking about it ever since we left. I was not gonna get one that day because I was like, I don't need it. But then I have thought about it pretty regularly since. So I think that's a good sign that it's something I would love to have also. My dad, before he passed away, made a bunch of stained glass. So stained glass also kind of has like a little bit of emotion attached to it. Um, but I'm excited. I love having these days where we just do a bunch of plant things in a row. We're also on the hunt for a really pretty parkway in Lincoln Park that I saw on Instagram. So I'm hoping we can find that and I'll put that in here as well. So it'll just be fun going around the city, getting some plants. Now let's measure the pots before I forget. These are the two pots that I want to get some plants for. Let me move my bag that's coming with out of the way. So I'm thinking a house plant for this one. This I got at, I can't remember which antique store, but I love it. I think it was maybe one in Chicago. I don't know. And then I got this moss basket that I've shown you before, or moss watering can. I feel more like, like flowers in this one. So maybe not something that'll last, you know, more than a couple of weeks but I just, I feel like having some flowers in here, but we'll see, it might change my mind. So what I need to do is measure the diameter and the depth. So this one is just under seven inches diameter and five and a half tall. You can also just take your pots to garden centers. I've done that as well, but since we're running a few different errands, I just don't want to bring more than I had to, but I have learned, well, I still don't always do this, but I have learned it's much better if you measure beforehand so you know what size plant you need. Uh, this one, so that was 75.5. This one, oh, this one's also seven. Now this one's really deep. I'm less concerned about depth, about 10 inches, because right now I actually have a nursery pot in here upside down. So this I'm more concerned about the diameter, which both of those are seven, that's easy, five and a half. And I need to take this with me because I'm very bad at eyeballing. So 
when I got my chair for my desk, I measured the desk opening, but I didn't measure the chair at the store because I was like, oh, that totally fits. And it totally didn't fit. So I'm taking measuring tape with me. And in this bag, I got, I don't know if this is something you can get like anywhere, but I got it from the plant store in Geneva, Illinois that I can't remember the name of. That's where I also got my Emerald Pothos. So let's go head out. Oh, actually, while we're here, let me just give you a quick update on plants because I think we're just starting to get warm enough or pretty soon they're gonna be kicked out. But like right now, almost all the plants are inside. So let me show you where things are situated and how things are looking, which they're looking really good. Let's start with the seedlings. So these, I was starting to harden them off and then the last couple days of temps got too cold for that, but now I think we're getting back up to where I can continue doing that again. But this is the largest, especially these, this is the largest my gumfrina has ever been inside. I did start this 10 weeks early versus eight weeks like usual. And I think this is working out really well because they're still not like so large that I feel like I definitely need to pot them up they're gonna be much further along starting out in the garden, which is nice. And then look how tall these tomatoes are and the cosmos behind them. Let me just rub on my fingers and give a sniff. Ah, oh, I love, I think tomatoes are probably the smell that's most related to like the summer in the garden to me, just because it smells so good. Um, don't think I need to water any of those. Basil moved out in a little bit, but not before the other herbs because they're less cold tolerant. I have my asters here, still having germination issues with the old ones, so the ones that are two years old. So we'll see if anything comes of that. Um, zinnias, I have a few here that didn't germinate, overall doing pretty good. Other gomfrina. These zinnias, I feel like some of them are taking a bit slower to germinate than the other batch, but I have, like I was getting nervous about my queen line with blush, but I have some little baby sprouts right there starting to poke through. So I think we're at least in a good place. And again, I start more than I can fit anyway, but it just makes me sad when like only one of four rows germinates. Coming over here, I have two of my Dahlia grow bags that have sprouted. One of the fairway spur, one of Lilac Thyme. They're just under the Soltec. I have all of my herbs that I got in the first round. So that's what I'm adding more to today. And again, I think like starting from today onward, we're above 50 degrees at night. So a lot of these are good to go outside then. These are, oh my gosh, this is grown overnight. Uh, these are <laughs> the zucchini and cucumbers I just potted up. So this is one of the zucchini. Look at how big that is already. Oh, this is the most exciting time in the garden. Coming in here, trying not to be too upset, but I just saw a bird eat a poppy seedling out of that bed. That's okay though. Um, but anyway, in here, what I have are the cantaloupe and zinnia, which I started for MeTV and was gonna get rid of because that was early February. And that was too early for me to start my plants, but then of course I couldn't. And look, I have a zinnia flower. Now the plant looks, you know, a little sad, but I'm excited to have a zinnia this early anyway, and we'll just kind of see what I decide to do with that. I have a Penhill watermelon, Dahlia sitting over there, peach tree, fig tree, those can probably be moved back outside now, hydrangea bush, and yeah, that's what's currently inside my home that hopefully can be outside very soon. Now we will head out and start our plant-filled day.
come back and I got some things. First of all, the flower show at the conservatory was so great. I absolutely love, so the room that had the most colors, the most flowers, that looks the most different than when you would go there during normal time. Um, it was so nice to see all those colors together. And then there were like little gnomes hidden out. It was really cute. So I loved it. I'm glad that we're finally like getting warmer and I don't need to escape to conservatories anymore to get out of the cold weather. But then I went to Gethsemane and let's start with the plants I got. So for these two, I went first because I said I wanted something blooming and I got a six inch pot of African violets. So I think if I just pop these in, <gasps> yeah, oh, I like that. Oh, that's really sweet. Okay, I'm very happy I chose that. So this is gonna stay inside just because I think that's going to protect it better than if it was getting rained on outside. So I love that. You will be in the center, but for now, let's move you to the side. Oh, how pretty. And then for this pot, I went with an aglionema. So I have had really good luck with aglionemas. In fact, the first plant, one of the first two plants that I got ever, like I mentioned, was from Gethsemane. I went in and asked the staff because I had a north facing room at the time and they recommended an aglionema and a snake plant, both of which I still have. And the aglionema, I've divided three or four times now and repotted it and repotted it. And it does great, it even flowers. So I decided to get another one. The first one I have is Silver Bay. This one just says aglionema. So I'm not sure of the variety, but I really liked the pattern on the leaves and I thought it went well with this brown pot. So like I said, there is already a nursery pot in there, which I think hopefully should be a good depth for this. Although I do want to, because I don't really like to take things out and water if I don't have to. Well, one, hang on, let me admire this. I think that's really good because I didn't, I love the basket so much that I didn't want something that was going to cover up the basket. Although I'm probably gonna have you be the front. So let's turn you around like that. So I think that's cute. What I need to do though is get a saucer. Hopefully one of these works. So just to kind of show you what's in here. First is a nursery pot, empty nursery pot upside down. Then let's see which one I think will protect the basket the most. Probably this one because the walls are high. So then this is going in next. And then you are going in after. So that's what I do because I wouldn't ever plant directly into this basket because it's not meant to get wet and hold soil. But now that I have the saucer under it, that'll be protected for when I do water it. If I did want to be extra careful, I can take it out and water it just over the sink. But I think this is great. So this will also be in the center of the table. I'm really happy with this. Sometimes I go in and I have gotten better at if I don't find something I love, like if I don't find what I think would be the perfect plant for it, I won't get it. Whereas when I first started getting to house plants, I would get anything and then try to find a spot for it. And that just led to having plants kind of cluttering up all of the spaces. Now let's look at the herbs that I got. So, the ones that I knew I needed were thyme and lemon thyme, and I'm just double checking rosemary because I wasn't sure if I'd gotten rosemary in the first round. So hey, actually, this is why it's great to take photos and video. I was looking at a video from when I got them to see if I had it or not. So I did pick up a rosemary. I picked up, this is the lemon thyme. It smells like lemon pledge in the best way. Like it doesn't smell like a fake lemony smell, but that's just the scent that it reminds me of. That I use both in food, but also in tea. I will mix this with my lemon balm just to add a little bit more kick. And then this is just English thyme. I would actually say surprisingly, well, maybe it's not surprising, I don't know, but regular thyme is probably the dried herb I use most in cooking. I just like the flavor of it on almost every single thing that I make. So these were ones that I knew I was going to get for sure. Then, because I'm having the same problem, so like I said, I have an order of mint plants coming in a couple weeks. I already got a second chocolate mint, just in case, and then I saw the apple mint at Gethsemane, and I don't often see apple mint. In fact, I think this is 
the first or second time I've actually seen it in a nursery. And there weren't a ton left because they tend to go fairly quickly. So when I saw this, I was like, you know what? I know I have an order. The receipt says it's coming, but what if something happens? And then I can't find an apple mint afterwards. So I got one. So now I'll have two and either I will keep both of them or I will give one away to a friend. So I'm just gonna, oh, that smells so good. Like I said, it's funny. I don't really enjoy just plain mint, straight up spearmint, peppermint, but all these flavored mints I'm obsessed with. So this will definitely be used for tea and probably in recipes as well, but let's move that over. <laughs> I have so many mints. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these, but then I got a basil mint, which I'd never heard of before. So this, does say anything specific on it? It says, leaves have nice citrus flavor that is great for tea and fruit drinks. So basil mint, it also grows in a more interesting shape than I've seen with regular mint where it like grows more into a bush. This so far at least seems more like a flat ground cover. We'll kind of see how that does in a pot, but this is even more potent than the apple mint. And I would almost say that I don't even really get a basil scent from it. I almost get, I mean, it does say citrus, just like general citrusy, maybe a little bit of grapefruit. I'm so excited. Should I just eat a leaf? I'm just going to eat a leaf and see what that tastes like. Let's take you. Ooh. Mmm. It's good and powerful. Definitely tastes citrusy. Again, not getting like basil flavor, but basil mint is what it's called. Then I can't believe I almost forgot this in my garden. And if I had forgotten it, I would have been so sad. But other than chocolate mint, my other favorite herb that I use the most in making teas is pineapple sage. And I told myself because in the past I've grown tricolor sage, I've done variegated sage and just the like, again, basic sage herbs. I don't use that much. So I told myself I wasn't getting any sage this year for getting that pineapple sage is one of my must haves. So I picked this up too and when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I would have been so sad. I don't know at what point into the garden season I would have realized I forgot it. Luckily I do still have some dried, but oh, I would have been so sad. So this is just, this is probably my favorite like fruit type herb and we'll see after I try all the fruit mints, but pineapple sage, the scent is just, Fantastic. The taste is delicious. I am so excited that I saw this and didn't forget. So none of these I'm potting up today. I might pot them up in the next couple days though, because I think the weather is getting warm enough where I can keep them outside. Some of these will need a little drink of water, but I'm so excited. So these are the herbs that I got now. I should be good. I should be good on herbs because I still have six coming from Mount Valley Growers. I tried to do fewer herbs this year and now I think I have more. So I don't know, best laid plans. So those are all the plants I got. Now I did go to Anderson Vale Galleria and oh, it was Smants Glass, S-M-A-N-T-H-S -S Glass. And I got the one that I thought when I knew I was there last time would be the best for me. And it's this, it's a hanging pink and green. My office is pink and green and it's just a hanging stained glass. So I think, I don't know where I'm gonna put this. So I, I mean, I know it's gonna go in my office. My original thought was, actually bring this up closer so you can see how pretty it is. Look how pretty. And it was $35, which there was definitely things that she made that were more expensive, which makes sense because they seemed very intricate, but I was actually kind of surprised this was only 30, what was it, 33, 35, 35. But I absolutely love it. And I think if I put it by, hmm, maybe by my variegated rubber tree, my ruby rubber tree, I don't know, we'll see. Then as we were getting ready to head back to the car, we walked by a store that had a sign out front that said, House plants, so obviously I had to go inside. So the store is called Green Goose, right down from the Galleria, or maybe it was across the street from the Galleria. And I got two things. So first I got this, which is Packer Plant Co. Bye Bye Fly for fungus gnats, because I do have, it was worse maybe a few months ago, 
I do have the yellow sticky traps, but there are still some fungus gnats flying around. So this, how it works, it says it's an all natural treatment that eliminates common fungus gnats by disrupting their environment. Make sure the soil is dry prior to application. Apply a generous layer to the top of plant soil. Treatment time is approximately one month. Bottom water during use. So I asked the lady that was working there because I can bottom water some of my plants, but not all of my house plants. So she said what she does for the one she can't bottom water is just she'll water it. The next day she'll put this on and then she'll continue that. So the next time she has to water, she'll water, put this on the next day and that works. So I'm excited to try this out. And then, because the best way to get me to buy something is when I walk into your store and it smells amazing and I ask what it is and then you tell me it's the candle you're burning or it's the incense you have. So I got this candle, which is from Rowan, I think is the brand, R-O-E-N. It's, I almost said the variety is Botanica. The scent is Botanica and it smells very good. It's like a combination of like it's not super sweet floral but it's not like super earthy herby it's kind of in between and i think does it say what the scent is yes so it's a combination oh this is interesting it's a combination of wild mint sage not pineapple sage white tea tomato leaf and vanilla which i never would have thought to combine all those but it smells very very nice. So I'm excited to light this. But that was everything that I got. If you are in Chicago, I mean, these are all the places that I go, well, except for the Green Goose, which now I'll go to frequently. But I mean, I'm at Gethsemane so much, especially during the garden season. Um, I love, we can actually walk if it's nice outside. It's like 30 to 45 minute walk down to the conservatory. Um, Anderson Val Andersonville Galleria we'll hop into. So I love all these places. If you're ever in Chicago, I will say though, as much as I love the Lincoln Park Conservatory, the Garfield Conservatory down Garfield Park is incredible. It's at least three times the size, maybe two or three times the size. It's huge, it's gigantic. So if you only had time to go to one conservatory, I would say that one. But then this one's also right next to the zoo, which we did walk through, so that was really nice. Anyway, that is everything for today. Pretty soon you will probably see me potting up these herbs and hopefully getting them outside. Maybe I'll really quickly kind of clean up the mess I've made, put those two plants in the middle and see how they look as a centerpiece. I love how this looks. And of course I had to light the candle so I could get the scent going in here. But I think, especially for the watering can, that's just like exactly what I was hoping for. Now I know they won't flower forever, but I think even with like the leaves of the African violet, that'll still look really pretty in there. But I'll probably swap things in and out of that watering can planter. Whereas the other one with the Aglionema, that's probably gonna stay in that for as long as it lasts. So that's gonna be everything for this video. I feel like we're just about to hit that point in the garden season where everything happens so quickly because I mean, for the last couple months I've been seed starting, but it's been kind of like a, I don't know, calm schedule every few days. Whereas as soon as the weather turns really warm, it's like get everything out. So I think that's coming up soon and I'm very excited. Of course, I will take you along for that whole process, but thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.